hi guys and welcome to my channel and today in this video we are going to discuss user goal versus event decomposition technique in order to identify the different use cases so guys in this video we'll be doing a very brief example of a supermarket and for a supermarket working we will try to identify the different use cases using user goal and event decomposition technique so guys for the full video all of you stay tuned Karen Jetley live. So guys, what do you understand by a use case? So basically, what is a use case? Use case are the different cases for which we use some system. So use case are the different cases for which we use a system. For example, I am a supermarket employee. I work there as a cashier okay and in supermarket they are using some system okay and what are the different uses of that system to me? okay all those things will are called as use cases okay so for example me as a cashier i can make a invoice for a customer using the system me as a cashier i can process the payment for a customer as a cashier okay so these are the different uses which i have of the supermarket system okay or these are the different cases for which i use the supermarket system and what are these called as these called as these are called as use cases basically guys use cases are used to model the functional requirement and when we talk about functional requirement what are functional requirement functional requirement are also what are the different things or whatever that are the different uses of a system which you are going to build or what are the different functions of a system which we are going to build now coming to the point okay user goal technique so guys what is user goal technique in user goal technique what we do we identify the different users of a system we identify the different users of a system for example in a supermarket okay what are the different users for a system so we have the cashier who prepares the bill who handles all the cash we have a staff who is entering and managing the inventory isn't it so we will identify the different users who are using that system and what are their functional roles and what are their functional roles for example just now i identified two different users one is the person who is working there as a cashier who is working there as a cashier and I identified another person who is working there as a, you can say, stock handler. Okay, so I have a cashier, I have a stock handler. Basically, both are workers. Basically, both are workers of the supermarket. But here, his role, he plays the role of cashier. So, his functional role is cashier and he plays the role of stock handler or someone who is managing the stock and who is managing the inventory of the supermarket okay so then first i identify the different users then what i do is i interview them and i ask them a simple question what do you do on the system what do you do on the system or what is your goal to use this system normally cashier will not use it until yeah unless some customer comes and he wants to buy something isn't it until he unless some customer comes and he wants to buy something then what cashier will do cashier will say i use this system in case any customer buys the product okay i process his sales i process his sales so what do i do i handle the sale how do you handle it he will say i scan the products i create the bill i scan the products i create the bill and then i tell the total amount to the customer then customer pays me the money and i handle the payment and i handle the payment so this is what he tells you okay i ask him what do you do he tells me this is what he is doing so what exactly he is doing when i interview him i identify i identify he prepares the bill to prepare the bill he has to scan the product okay so then the bill is prepared then after this he handles the payments okay he takes payments can be handled either by cash or by credit 
card okay here we will go with only two payment options so then what are the different use cases i identified for cashier one is handling the sales or managing the sales m a n g i n g managing sales okay another one what he is doing he is handling the payments okay so i interview him he tells what he is doing okay or, or for what he is using that supermarket system he tells i use it to handle my sales and i'll also use it to handle the payments which customer does to me for the purchase he has made so what are these these are the two use cases for the cashier these are the two use cases for the cashier what i did i identified the different users one of the user is the cashier his role name is who role name is cashier i interview him i interview him what do you do with the system or what what is what for you use the system he says i use the system when some customer buys comes to buy some product so i handle his sale using the system and what else i do i handle his payment also to <clears throat> i also handle his payment using the system so what are these these are the two use cases for the cashier these are the two use cases for the cashier now similarly the other user i identified the other user i identified was the stock handler or the stock manager isn't it or i can say simply inventory staff so he is the one who is managing the inventory okay or in the beginning i called him as a stock handler okay let us write this also so that no okay stock handler okay so no matter whatever nice name you give so he is the one you know who is managing all the inventory or managing all the stock then i ask him yes what do you do when do you use the system okay so what do you do in the system he will say whenever the new stock comes i scan the stock and i update the system okay whenever some stock reaches the reorder quantity i order the new stock or i inform my manager to order the new stocks so what is his job he is using that system to enter the new stock whatever arrives in the supermarket okay and if some stock is reaching the reorder level means the stock is getting over and we need to reorder it so then he handles the, those things okay so what is his role in the supermarket he is the inventory staff or he is the stock handler so what he can do is any new product comes he scans or any new stock comes he stands and he updates the inventory he updates the inventory and he processes the or and he reorders the inventory okay so what do you do what do you do he says i update inventory and i reorder inventory i'm sorry for my bad handwriting but i hope you understand it so what is this technique called it is called as user goal technique so to make this video short to keep it short so what i did is i identified the different users i categorized them into their different roles and then i went and interviewed them so what you are doing in this system or what for you are using this computerized system so they says so it is and it is not mandatory the system has to be computerized so basically what do you do here what do you do here he says the cashier says i handle the sales i handle the payments the inventory staff according to his role name he says i handle the inventory how do you handle it so whenever new inventory comes i update it in the system and whenever the inventory is about to get finished i reorder the inventory okay so what is this technique called as it is called as user goal technique so guys now quickly we will make a use case diagram for it so guys now here is the use case diagram okay so these are my two actors there are more in the supermarket but as i told you to make it brief so i identified two different actors one is cashier why we call them actor because in the supermarket basically both are human beings but in the supermarket they both 
are doing different roles they are playing different roles this human being is the playing the role of cashier this human being is playing the role of stock handler so what cashier can do he makes the invoices he processes the payment what stock handler can do he updates the inventory and he reorders the stock okay so if some stock is getting over so guys in this also there are many included and extended use cases okay what are included use cases included use cases are the use cases which are mandatory which must be performed as part of some main use case for example to make an invoice what i must do in a store supermarket i should scan all the products i should scan all the products so what is this this is a mandatory use case so makes invoice it includes scan product it includes so what is include include is denoted by a dotted arrow okay dotted arrow away from the main use case with this written on top i can see here includes okay so making an invoice includes scanning the product okay so this is just one because the focus of this video is not to tell you how to draw a use case diagram for that i have another video the link to that video i will leave in the description okay where i have covered all the details about drawing the use cases the idea of this video is to just to tell you what are the two techniques for identifying the use cases so we diagram we draw after we have identified the use cases okay no when it comes to processing the payment as i told you so whenever we go to a supermarket we have different options to pay for our shopping okay so what i can do is i can take cash or i can take credit card isn't it so boys and girls eh hey, not boys and girls so guys what are these options okay i have two options to pay for my shopping i can pay by cash i can pay by credit card so this is these are two different options so option is something which is not mandatory means mandatory you must pay by credit card or mandatory you must pay by cash so what are these these are called as extends because these are the optional use cases okay depending upon what customer wants either i can take cash from him or i can take the credit card so extends it is a dotted arrow from the extended use case towards the main use case so what do we call it extends what we call it extends okay so now stock handler what he can do as i told you he can update the inventory so what is how to update the inventory so when new inventory comes he also scans and enters them okay and he can reorder the inventory okay so for these two i am not uh, making uh, the extended or the uh, mandatory use cases okay because the idea of this video is not that okay so what is this so this technique is called as user goal technique so what we do is we identify the different users we identify their roles in the system then we interview them what do you do in the system okay so after that we get a long list of use cases and guys there are some use cases which are shared between different users for example printing reports for example printing reports they all can print report cashier can also print report your stock handler can also print report your store manager manager can also print report okay so what we will do what what is this use case called as it is a duplicate use case he can also do it he can also do it he can also do it so when we identify three use cases whose purpose is same so then we remove the other two and keep only one so printing report manager can print report cashier can also print report and he can also print report so what we do is we identify the different users we interview them we classify them according to the their use roles then we interview them and then we identify the different use cases after we get the list of use cases we will see which use cases duplicate which use cases being repeated again and again so we will remove the duplicates and in the end we will get a long list of use cases and who is carrying out that use 
case and from that we can make a use case diagram like I made here like I made here. Now guys coming to the next technique that is called as event decomposition technique. So guys now the next technique event decomposition technique. So guys what is an event decomposition technique? In this technique we understand our system is nothing but a collection of different events. Our system is nothing but a collection of different events. Okay. So whenever a system is working what is happening is events. Okay. Now some events are relevant to our system. Some events which are having happening there are not relevant to our system. So why, why, why do I say the word relevant? Means relevant events are those events okay, which happen in my system and my system must respond to it and my system must respond to it. So those are the relevant event. Okay. So I will identify the relevant events. Then what use cases should be performed in response to that event? I will identify those use cases. Okay. So using by identifying the different events, I can also identify the different use cases which we need to do in order to carry out that event which we need to do in order to carry out that event. Now guys in the beginning I said the events can be relevant and they can be irrelevant but they all are happening in the system. Now again our thing was our system was a supermarket. Our thing was a super market. M A R K E T. So I am sorry I am bad with spellings and handwriting is bad. Okay but anyway pay attention what I am same. So our system was our example was of supermarket. Okay. Now in supermarket also many events are happening. For example, me as a customer, I walk into supermarket. It is one event. It is one event. So number one, I walk in, walk into market. Okay. Number two, I check products. I walk into market and I check different products. The supermarket care, if you are checking the products, is it relevant? Okay, we will d discuss it in the end. I check product, okay. I inquire, Ari, I inquire to the sales staff if I have any question. Then in the end what I do is, I buy a product. I buy a product. Normally this is what happens. Normally this, this is what happens and most of the time, Okay, no matter where you go, whether you are buying anything online or you are buying it face to face in a supermarket. So these are the sequence of the events. These are the sequence of the event. We walk into the supermarket. Okay, we look around, we check for the product. In case we have any question, we can ask the sales staff about the product. After that, either I will leave or I will check another product or I will buy the product. Okay, now should supermarket remember that I currently walked into the store. It is irrelevant to them. So should supermarket sh remember like me, I was checking some product irrelevant to them. Okay. So I am asking questions whenever you go and ask questions to the sales staff. So they will not enter anything in the system until you buy the product until you buy the product. So this is irrelevant. This is irrelevant. This is irrelevant. So what is relevant? Relevant is when you buy the product. Okay. So what is this? This is a relevant event. This is a relevant event. So when you are buying the product, then the system in the supermarket, it should respond to it. It should respond to it. How does it respond? So when you buy the product, how do you buy the product? How do you buy the product? They make an invoice. They make invoice and they process payment. They make the invoice and they process payment. Who makes the invoice? The cashier or the sales clerk like we identified. Who processes your payment? The cashier, isn't it? So this is irrelevant, this is irre ir irrelevant, this is also irrelevant. So what is relevant is this. Now to carry out this event, what are the use cases again? So if I am buying a product, 
how supermarket responds to it how do they sell it to me i go there i want to buy it okay so they make an invoice who makes the invoice the clerk or the cashier he makes the invoice and then he processes the payment okay again how can i do the payment i can pay by cash and i can pay by credit card now if you look at this so again same actor what he does he makes invoice and he process my payment okay these are the use case and what was the event what was the event customer buys a product customer buys a product so this is an event and these are the steps suppose after few days i want to return a product okay again what are the use cases i again i enter the store i walk to the counter event event irrelevant okay i go and i want to say i want to change the product isn't it so then what happens again the cashier will process my exchange request they will process my exchange request again he will check the invoice he will check the terms and conditions he will take the product and give me a credit note and he will give me a store credit note or whatever the rules are employed isn't it so customer returns the product and the cashier processes it processes the returns isn't it so processing return again is a use case customer wants to return the product is an event now similarly another event no new inventory in where arrived new stock arrived now when new stock arrives then which actor comes into action which actor comes into action your stock handler your stock so now new stock has arrived so what is the use case my stock handler should do what he should update the inventory he should update the stock or now this is an event this is a use case in response to that event okay so what do we call it we call it as event decomposition technique so guys in the event decomposition technique you track the sequence of events what happens first what happens next what happens next and then try to identify the event to which your system must respond the event which is relevant okay customer walks into the store customer parks his car or are not relevant to us they are events but they are not relevant customer buys a product then what is our use case okay what the cashier has to do in response to that event isn't it new stock arrived what should he do he should update the inventory so this is an event and this is the response to that event in terms of use case so what do we call this technique we call this technique as event decomposition technique so guys before we end this video quick revision what is a user goal technique we identify the different users we classify them into their functional roles then we interview them what do you do in the system so based upon what they are doing in the system we identify the different use cases okay after we identify them there must be there are normally some duplicate or repeating use cases eliminate all the duplicates in the and you will get a list of use cases what is that user goal technique means what is the goal of the user while he is using that system for example i go to atm what is my goal to go to atm so my goal to atm is is to either take the money or to check my balance or to pay my bills or to transfer the cash these are my goals that's why i'm going to atm so my goals becomes what in the atm they become different use cases of atm now similarly another technique event decomposition technique try to identify what are different events in the system which are happening customer visits an atm customer visits an atm okay so he visits an atm 
what he can do in the atm so while he visits the atm he can withdraw cash he can check his balance he can transfer the funds and so on so what are the use cases which we must <coughs> respond with in response to some event so what do we call it we call it as event decomposition technique and guys i told you this use case diagram is not a detailed use case diagram where i will cover the scenario of extends and includes and everything for that i have another video it is bit old it is bit old the quality is not very good but still it will help you to understand how to draw a diagram that is after we have identified the different use case so the goal of this video is to explain you the different techniques in order to identify the different use cases for a system and guys i hope i make it clear to you so guys if you like my videos please subscribe to my channel i'll be uploading more lectures related to it and uh, technical reviews and much more so guys all of you thanks for watching and stay tuned